أخي وعلى والدي وأن أعمل صالحا تضاه أصلح لي في ذريتي إني تبت إليك وإني من المسلمين اللهم إن نسألك قرب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم دائما أبدا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما صلوا عليه السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته هذه مجالس كثرة كثرة الصلاة على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فلا تبخلوا في الصلاة عليه Send lots of salawat upon the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم As you all know it is Thursday night and wallahi I really love that he's bringing a notebook you know Sheikh Abdul Fattah Abu Ghudda he would always send, say this لا بد لطالب العلم من كناش يكتب فيه راكبا أو ماشي that a student of knowledge he has to have a notebook that he takes or takes with him wherever he goes and he writes with it whether he's on you know on a boat in a plane whether he's walking he always keeps a notebook and a pencil or a pen with him this is a characteristic of a talib علم and I encourage not just People who, you know, who are طلاب علم full time, but everyone, they should have maybe some notes that they take on their phone or on their devices. How many benefits and fawaid do we hear all the time? But then we just forget it as time passes. But if you write down notes and you just try to, you know, just even a, a note, a, a, you know, a thing or two that just helps you remember later on, you'll, you'll be surprised as to how much knowledge you'll encompass after five, six, seven, eight years of your life. Hearing, you know, constantly new things. Just a small advice. Um, the chapters we're covering today are uh, the first chapter, and then we'll go to the chapters after. Babu ma jaha fi jilsati Rasulillahi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Sallu alaihi. What is narrated concerning how the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to sit, and the chapters after. Babu ma jaha fi tukaati Rasulillah sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa tikaihi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. As to him leaning on objects and leaning on people. Um, as you all know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's our Uswa, our Iswa. Iswa or Uswa in the different Qira'at. Uswa tul Hasana. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for us is the best example that we could ever follow. You know, And that means in all of his things. Not just in religious guidance, but even how he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam carried himself in all actions. You know, one, one of the... Non-believers was, you know, said to the, said uh, to one of the Sahaba in a degrading way that, you know, your, you know, your prophet teaches you everything. There's not a single thing that he's left, and they, and then they said, affirming it, yes, he even tells us the adab of how one should relieve themselves. You see, to that extent, a Muslim knows how to uh, follow the Prophet sallallahu even akramakumullah in how we relieve ourselves, we follow how the Prophet sallallahu taught us. Uh, what's narrated regarding the jilsa of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? I'm going to need a young man as an example. Can I use anybody? You want to you volunteer? This is following the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You'll do tatbiq of the sunnah, okay? Uh, not right now, but I'll call you for it. Uh, what is narrated concerning the how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to sit? This hadith, I'll narrate it for you in Arabic first. An qayla anha ra'at Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sallu alayhi في المسجد وهو قاعد القرفصاء and it also is called الاحتباء قالت فلما رأت رأيت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم المتخشع في الجلسة أرعدت من الفراق so basically there was a woman she uh, she came a young woman she came to see the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and she saw him in the masjid and she sat uh, and, and the Prophet Sallallahu was sitting in a style called al qurfusa If you want to write it, al qurfusa or al ihtiba So I'm going to have you come now if that's fine. Yeah. So if you just sit right here and you sit, uh, yeah, but you put your knees up like this. Yeah, I'll, I'll, how about I do it? I do it. You don't have to do it, inshallah. I got it, don't worry, inshallah. So sitting like this, sitting, astaghfirullah, like this, with your hands across like this. So even if you do it right now, just to follow the sunnah of the Prophet do it. At least one time in your life, follow the sunnah of the Prophet of him sitting like this. This is called Jalsat al-Qurfusa. Say it with me. Qurfusa. Or Ihtiba. 
The Prophet وسلم, was sitting like this, and he وسلم, would sometimes sit like this, sometimes he would sit cross legs, sometimes he would sit like a person would sit in tashahud. And there's another style that's also mentioned. And so she says that I saw the Prophet وسلم, sitting in this, and you see how like humble it is, and it's in, like as though you're in a state of reflection. She said, when I saw him sitting in such a humble and tranquil manner, mutahashir, mutahashir, sometimes could be meaning out of like uh, someone's trying to show that they're mutahashir, but that's not what's intended here. What's intended here is mubalagha, that the Prophet was in an incredible state of khushur. You know, he just imagine his hala, what he's you know, pondering over the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, pondering over Allah's greatness, mutahashir. He's in that state, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the way he was sitting, and when she saw him, she trembled out of awe for him. Because you know, the Prophet وسلم, he had a haiba to him. And the reason he وسلم, had a haiba to him, some of the ulama mentioned, is so that those people that were foolish, the non believers, they would not ever, because of fear of the Prophet, وسلم, they would not dare say something bad against him. They would not dare say something that was, was terrible. Because they had this fear in Haiba of the Prophet وسلم, and the Sahaba, they even had this Haiba towards him. And if you know all of the ahadith that were reported about his physical appearance were from the young Sahaba, like Anas radiallahu anhu, like Ibn Abbas, right? And Ali radiallahu anhu, Allah and Abdul, uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, many of those companions. But uh, even the Sahaba, they had this Haiba towards him. Why? So that they do not become distracted with his beauty, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Even they could not look at him for too long and gaze upon him for too long because they would then become distracted by his beauty, and they would be distracted from his beauty from seeing how complete of a, of a person he was, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in his character and everything else. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa taala put in, in him this haiba. And there's many instances where this occurred. Once an Arabi, a Bedouin man, came and he saw the Prophet وسلم, and he got shocked and he got, you know, he had, he he was scared. And so the Prophet وسلم, he said, you know, relax. He said, I am but a man, uh, uh, you know, this, uh, I am but a son of a woman, who used to eat dry meat. Basically, saying, yeah, I'm just, uh, you know, like you don't have to, you know, be scared of me. That's what he was trying to get to. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And there is another instance where uh, there was a, uh, a companion by the name of Abu Mas'ud. Abu Mas'ud, not Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. And he was, you know, whipping his, his, uh, his ghulam, his slave. And so he was whipping and, you know, mistreating. And so the Prophet ﷺ, when he saw this and he was behind him, and imagine how scared you would be if you're doing this and you know it's wrong. The Prophet said behind him, he said, I'lam ya Abu Mas'ud, anna Allah aqdaru alayka minka ala hadha ghulam. That Allah is more capable to do something upon you than you are to this ghulam. And he, he became so scared that he turned around, he knew the Prophet ﷺ, he said, حرون, He said, he is free, Ya Rasulullah. He is, he is free now. I free him. He, he did this to, you know, to, to, uh, to attain forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with what he, for what he did. حرون في سبيل الله. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, if you did not free him, then you would have been punished by the hellfire. You see? And so, the, so he immediately followed the command of the Prophet ﷺ. So this, this young woman, when she saw the Prophet ﷺ, that's mentioned in the hadith, in this state, mutakhashit state, in the state, uh, uh, in the sitting of qurfusa or ihtiba, she became afraid. And so one of the, one of the sahaba that was there, he said, ur'idat al miskina, Because remember, she was behind the Prophet ﷺ. And so the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Ya miskina, alayki sikina. It's like, Ya Miskina, just take it easy, you know, relax, you know, relax. And she became immediately, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Alayki bis Sakina. She became in a, in a relaxed state and she no longer had that, that, that awe or fear of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This sitting, by the way, this, this sitting, there's a hadith, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Naha Anil Hubwa, which is a sitting of Ihtiba. All of the madahib, they say, no, it's fine, in Jumu'ah. Naha an Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam an Hubba fil Jumu'ah But this, this hadith only the Shafi'iyah take it So for the Shafi'iyah to sit like this For a person who follows the Shafi'i Madhab This is disliked in the, during the khutbah they, they mentioned the reasoning is because Perhaps if someone sits like this They might fall asleep Or perhaps you know, because of this sitting It might you know, cause your stomach to Perhaps you know, make you lose wudu Pass some gas 
it's it's uh, it it would uh, it would lead to that. But the other madhahib say it's fine. The Prophet ﷺ himself, in a state of khushur, he sat like this. So there's no fine, uh, there's no problem sitting like this, unless you know that mashallah, if I'm giving khutbah and you're falling asleep, you're just gonna go, you know? That's, then it's not allowed. Because you're supposed to be paying attention. Some people, I don't know, they love to fall, they love to take their, their daily naps during the khutbah, but we shouldn't be doing that. Uh, the, the next hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, that the Prophet uh, one of the Sahaba, رأى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم مستلقيا في المسجد واضعا إحدى رجليه على الأخرى. That the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was lying down in the masjid, okay, with one leg placed over the other. This is called istilqa, okay. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he was lying down in the masjid. Can I have you, young gentlemen, come uh, if, if that's fine? Exactly. Yeah. So just lie down here. And I, I would do it, but you know it's gonna make, cause too many problems. So just lie down. Yeah, just lie down. Yeah, lie down flat. Yeah, on your back. Yeah. He's doing it to show us, so it's not bad adab. And then put your or put your both of your legs up like that, and put one of them on the other. This is called istilqa. What is it called? Istilqa. You can go back now. Jazakallah khair. The Prophet sallallahu was seen lying down in the masjid with one leg placed over the other. Again. If you are in a place, uh, if you are, for example, in the masjid, and he was in the masjid doing this, and there's not many, many people all around, for you to lie down, take some rest, you are around some friends, to sit like this among friends, it's fine. But if it's so crowded, and everyone is there, and then you lie down like this, it's not, it's not good to do, right? You, you should be careful as to how you sit in different, different circumstances. You wouldn't want to sit like this if, for example, the whole masjid is full, and you're the only one guy that's was lying down like that. But if the message is empty, you know, between salawat and you, and you choose to lie down because you're tired, the Prophet ﷺ himself did this. There's a hadith, by the way, that uh, when the Prophet ﷺ, he says, none of you should lie down in the masjid like this. Why? Imam al nawi he says about this hadith, the illa is because back in the day, they did not wear pants and shirt and what we wear. What did they wear? Izab and ridha. Right? So what did that mean? Have you seen how a person, they have the ihram? Are they wearing anything underneath? No. So if you were to lie down in that state, you might expose your awrah. I'm sure people are going for ihram or hajj right now. Some uncle here and there, <laughs> you don't know what they're showing to the world. You have to be very careful when you lie down. Wearing the, the ihram, wearing the izab and be that, you might show something. I, I, I can say that from personal experience, some people, they don't realize this. And in Hajj, in the Minat tents, they will ihram, and they're showing everything to everyone. Astaghfirullah. <laughs> right? It's so bad. That's so that's right. why the Prophet ﷺ, mana, you know, naha an hadha, so that you don't expose your awrah. But if the masjid is empty and you choose to lie down, there is no issue with this, inshaAllah. Uh, the next chapter is related to tuka'ah, which is on the pattern of humaza or lumaza. The Prophet ﷺ has narrated Concerning him lying down and reclining against something. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The first, which means that he was lying down on either, you know, either side on a pillow or a cushion uh, or something uh, of that sort. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ra'aytu wa sallam an Jabir ibn Samura, muttaki'an ala wisada ala yasari. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was reclining against a cushion on his left side. Is, there, is that a problem to lie down and recline on something on your left side? No, it's not. You write, lie down on your left side, your right side. It's a cushion. Wherever the cushion is, you can lie down in. It's not like, you know, you do the good things with your right side and you do the, you know, the things that are ill on the left side. When it comes to reclining, you just recline on whichever side you feel more comfortable in. That's the reason why a person, Aslan, is reclining. So whether it's on your left side or right side, there is no issue. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the next hadith, عن عبد الرحمن بن أبي بكر عن أبيه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى عليه the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he says ألا أحدثكم بأكبر الكبائر should I not inform you of the greatest of the major sins and this hadith is usually reported in the books that talk about the major sins like by Imam Suyuti and other books that talk about the major sins he says shall I not inform you of the gravest of the major sins and you see look at the way the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم talks he talks in a way to capture the attention of people. He, they said, of course, Ya Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Al-Ishraqu Billah. Associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa'uququl walidayn. 
and disrespecting one's parents. As you all know, all throughout the Quran, whenever Allah mentions His right, He right, right, mentions the right of who after? Parents. He mentions the right of who? Parents after. وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَا تَعْبُدُ إِلَّا وَبِالْوَالِدِينِ إِحْسَانًا وَاعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشِكُ بِهِ شَيْءٌ وَبِالْوَالِدِينِ إِحْسَانًا Always Allah, then He mentions the right of the parents. He mentions these two. And the Prophet وسلم, while He's mentioning this, He's reclining. Okay? وَكَانَ مُتَّكِئَا صلى الله عليه وسلم. He was saying this whilst He was reclining. Which means that if a person chooses to teach whilst reclining or have a conversation with people whilst he's reclining, it's not عيب. Some people, you know, they have this thought that if the teacher is teaching or if the imam is giving a lecture and he's reclining against something, that it's عيب. Look at him, well, he has no respect for us. No, the Prophet ﷺ, he's the best example and he ﷺ, would sit and be around the Sahaba and teach them and he would be reclining against something. So there is no problem with that. And then he ﷺ, he was reclining and then he got up. He ﷺ, he got up with jealous. And then he said, وَشَهَادَةُ الزُّورِ وَقَوْلُ الزُّورِ وَشَهَادَةُ الزُّورِ وَقَوْلُ الزُّورِ وَشَهَادَةُ الزُّورِ وَقَوْلُ الزُّورِ And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, مَا زَالَ يَقُولُ فَمَا زَالَ يَقُولُهَا حَتَّى قُلْنَا لَيْتَهُ السَّكَتْ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ He kept saying, شَهَادَةُ الزُّورِ قَوْلُ الزُّورِ Which means uttering a false statement. Uttering a false statement. Where, you know, uh, for, for example, spreading lies and was, uh, you know, Ghiba uh, and doing all sorts of that, talking ill about people and spreading lies about people. The Prophet ﷺ, when he was talking about al ishraq billah wa al walidin, which is, of course is the gravest sin that a person can commit, but he got up to say shahadatu zur wa qawl zur, uttering a false statement, meaning we should be very careful as to how we speak with, amongst each other. The reason he did not get up for those two and he got up for the third is because the third, not only does it affect a person as the first two, but it affects and corrupts the whole community. When a person starts speaking ill and false statements and spreading lies amongst this community, he's not only harming himself, but he starts harming others as well. That's why how serious the Prophet ﷺ, he got up from that reclined state, and the Sahaba, they said, we wish that he ﷺ would have stayed silent, would become silent. Later who second? Not out of like later who second in a bad way, but because shafaqatan ﷺ, you know? They're seeing that the Prophet ﷺ, he got into such an intense state, out of rahmah for him, they did not want to see him in such an intense state. And, uh, and so that's why the, uh, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they said this. The next hadith, عن أبي جحيفة قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أما أنا فلا آكل متكئة As for me, I do not eat whilst reclining. I do not eat, uh, eat whilst reclining. Nowadays, you know, people, they'll be sitting on their couches, reclining, mashallah, have the TV, you know, you know, mashallah, they have enough food to binge. They just eat and eat and eat and eat and they're just reclining. This is, this is bad. You should not be eating in that reclining state, acting as though the jababira, you're a king. You know, the, the Prophet ﷺ, he says in a hadith, uh, he says, إِنَّمَا أَجْلِسُ كَمَا يَجْلِسُ الْعَبْدِ وَآكُلُ كَمَا يَأْكُلُ الْعَبْدِ He said, I sit as a servant sits and I eat as a servant eats. Look at the humility of the Prophet ﷺ. Even in the way he sat to eat, he ﷺ was sit in a humble way. He would not sit arrogantly and be reclining. And so the scholars, when they mention the hukum of it, the ruling of it, what is it? Is it haram or what is it? What's the hukum of eating like uh, reclining? Dislike. Huh? Dislike, makruh, right? So a person should avoid it. Unless there's like an udhar, you're in a hospital bed, that's, that's different. But you should not, you know, uh, become, uh, take it as a habit to eat whilst reclining. It's not something that's good. Some people, Allah, they're so haris ala sunnah, they're so, you know, they want to follow the sunnah and everything that even, you know, when they're eating grapes and stuff like that, they choose not to lie down because they're like the Prophet ﷺ, he said, I don't eat whilst reclining. And so they choose to follow the Prophet ﷺ to such an extent that even when they're relaxing, eating grapes, you know, you've seen those, the imagery that people lie down, mashallah, someone is feeding them grapes or maybe their wife or you're feeding your wife, inshallah soon. <laughs> That what? You don't do it whilst reclining, just out of following the Prophet ﷺ and his sunnah. Uh, the next hadith is related to the same thing. Now I must ask, what's the hukam of eating whilst standing? Haram? Is it haram? It's not haram. It's either makruh or khilaf awla. That it's that is something that you should avoid, it's something that you should not do. Okay? Uh, but like again, so the fact of the matter is, it's not something that's haram. 
So don't, sometimes, you know, sometimes like you'll be eating standing up, and then someone will come and say, oh, why are you eating standing up? Go sit down. This is not how you're supposed to address people. There's no adab in that. You know? it's, not it's not haram. So you should not be going up to people and be like, well, you should be sitting down and doing this. Why are you standing up? That's not the adab of how you should address your Muslim. That's not from the akhlaq of the Prophet ﷺ. That when someone is doing something where there's even disagreement, is it disliked or not, that you're going to tell them that, hey, you're supposed to be sitting down. Be, be easy on people. If you want to follow that sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, and you don't want to stand up whilst eating, that's good. MashaAllah alayk. But don't go around and refuting people. Sometimes you'll see at events at the masjid or different different house parties where people will go around, but you're not supposed to be standing in. Man anta hatta yani hatta tunkir ala nas. Who are you to go around and refuting people? That's not adab. Who's That's fighting? not from adab. Huh? Who's fighting? Causing fighting and causing more and more problems. That's voices. Yes. The next uh, the next chapter and it's very short. Inshallah, what has been narrated regarding ittika Rasulullah sallallahu we talked about how he reclined on things. Now we're going to talk about how he reclined on people. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And he did this, you know, out of sickness. He sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not do it just just for for the fun of it, but because he sallallahu alaihi wasallam was was either sick or for other uh, reasons as such. What has been narrated concerning the leaning of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? An Anas, an Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, kana shakiya. فخرج يتوكل على أسامة بن زيد وعليه ثوب قطري قد توشح به فصلى بهم. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم صلوا عليه. He was ill. كان شاكيا means he was ill. And they mentioned the Shurrah, the commentators. They mentioned that this was the sickness of his uh, right before his passing. Anybody know why he fell sick right before passing? The poison. There was a in Khaybar there was a Jewish woman who prepared meat. Meat, a shah, sheep, for the Prophet ﷺ and uh, some of the other Sahaba, and she poisoned it. And she asked which one was the blessed part that the Prophet ﷺ liked. It was the what? Shoulder, the dirah. And so she put extra poison in it. And he, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he of course, you know, he was he was invited as a guest, and she gave him that food and the Sahaba as well, and they ate from it. And guess what? The Prophet ﷺ, as he was eating. The laham itself, cooked, spoke to the Prophet ﷺ. This is mentioned in the books of the Mu'jizat. The miracles of the Prophet ﷺ, that laham that was cooked, spoke to the Prophet ﷺ. You see, can you imagine that? that like imagine a plate of biryani is talking to you. You see? That, I am, I, that, that woman poisoned me. And so the Prophet ﷺ, he then called her and he addressed her. This, this food is poison, you know? And she said, oh... And she, she made an excuse for herself. What? I wanted to test you as if you were a prophet. I wanted to test if you were a prophet. If you were a king and if you were just you know, someone who wanted to take power, then I would have, you know, we would have been free of you. And if you were a prophet, then you would have been told. So I was just testing you, which is a lie. That's not why she no. did it. And, she, and so what? The Prophet ﷺ, never, never did he take revenge for himself. Never in his life, not once, did he take revenge for himself. He did not do anything to that lady. If it was any of us that were poisoned, we would have killed him. Oh of course, if you were poisoned to, to be killed, what would you do? What would you do in that state? Huh? You defend yourself. You do something about it. The Prophet ﷺ never took revenge on himself. The Sahabi that was with him, he passed away from the, that, that poisoned food. And so he, وسلم, because of that, they did, they, they did qisas. That's, huh? He has an humma because of that. No, no, I'm talking about the Sahabi that was with exactly. the Prophet. He passed away, and only because of that, that woman was killed for her crime of causing the death of the Sahaba. He did not do it for himself. He forgave her first. When they passed away, when they died from the poison food, then the then the qisas happened. Uh, but the Prophet, Wallahu Allah protected him from the people. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also wanted to give the Prophet. A death of a shaheed. So he, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he died a shaheed. Because why? He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he got the ajr of a shaheed. He met Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he was poisoned by the food of that woman. And like he said, he became sick towards the end of his life, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that's the marad. So he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came out whilst he was sick and he was leaning on who? Usama ibn Zayd. And this is kind of a sign to show the, the Prophet ﷺ, just as he was leaning on him, the Muslims later, after the passing of the Prophet ﷺ, would lean on Usama ibn Zayd. And he would go on to lead the army at the young age of what? 
15 or less 16. 18. 18. Very young. Uh, very young. Okay. <laughs> Imagine an 18 year old Middle. leading an army. Middle. A lot of us, we like to baby our children, we like to baby our teenagers. The Prophet ﷺ was preparing them to be generals and warriors and leaders. Scholars. This is how we should treat our young men. Not baby them and mashallah, give them the spoon in the stomach, yeah, mashallah. You know, give them, you know, tuck them into bed. And we should be doing that out of love, but we should also be training them uh, you know, to become men and uh, young women as well. The Prophet ﷺ is wearing a Qitri garment, which is like a, a Yemeni burda. I mentioned that in Libas, you can, uh, you can go back to those videos. That he, that he had thrown on Musli, and then he led them وسلم, in prayer. The next hadith, this is the last hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, one of the companions he reports that I went to the Prophet ﷺ during his illness, from which he was to pass away, and he was wearing a yellow, ple yellow piece of cloth around his head. A yellow piece of cloth, around his head, and a lot of the people that cite a hadith related to the different colors of Amama, of the Prophet ﷺ, that he would wear a yellow one. This is also one of the narrations that they mention. He was wearing a yellow piece of cloth around his head. I, gre I greeted him, whereupon he said, Ya fadl, O fadl, to which I replied, Labbaik Ya Rasulullah. At your service, Ya Rasulullah. Look at the adab that they have. At your service, Ya Rasulullah. And we all say, Labbaik Ya Rasulullah. Qulu, Labbaik Ya Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then he said, uh, tighten this cloth around my head. And he did this, why? Because he had a headache, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when you tighten it, it might help. Uh, uh, and so he did that. And then he sat up, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and placed the palm of his blessed hand on my shoulder and stood up, meaning he leaned on him and entered the masjid. And this hadith is connected to the passing of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he led them in salah and he talked to them. He said, anybody who has a vein, We'll cover that towards the, the last chapter. And with that, we've covered three chapters. What has been narrated regarding the sitting of the Prophet ﷺ. We mentioned Qur Fusa Ihtiba, how he reclined against cushions, and how Sallallahu used to recline against some of the Sahaba when he fell sick. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us Qurb al Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this life and the next. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to drink from his blessed hand, from the hawb. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gather us ma'an nabiyyin wa siddiqeen wa shuhada wa salihin wa hasuna ulaika rafiqa wa salli allahumma ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Wa alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh